I know a couple of people will join a bit later, but uh, um, for my project even. Uh, let me share my screen. I'll describe what I want to share today. Uh, just a second. Uh, hope you can see my screen now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Uh, so first of all, um, I will introduce myself. So many people already know me. I'm uh, architect from Center of Excellence. Uh, my main profile is actually mobile. I started uh, many, many years on it. Uh, I'll describe this. So usually participating in uh, different activities like architectural service execution, discovery, assessments, uh, um, estimating projects, uh, leading projects, uh, etc. So uh, cooperation with all stakeholders and all of those things. So today I want to share some examples of uh, our pre-sales and activities we were doing and why it was important um, for everybody in the team, not only for architects and management and uh, uh, our DevOps in some cases, uh, stuff like that. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, like I said, I started many years ago in the mobile uh, in general, uh, with the first, you, know, you might see this Windows mobile uh, no, phone. Uh, on Apple and from 2011, uh, the first iPad, it was uh, one core and it was some specific on developing most trading application on one core uh, device. So it's iOS 4.3, as I remember. Uh, so like I said, I'm usually uh, leading those projects. Uh, so today I want to cover uh, some uh, problems we are doing during pre-sales, some team collaborations, some case studies, and a couple of interesting fact in facts. Uh, I will also would be nice to hear your interesting facts or some issues you have uh, uh, on the pre-sales too for the mobile projects. Uh, so, uh, as you know, and for people who watch this uh, recording, uh, usually uh, our customers come to us with some legacy code. It's, uh, I would say most of the time they already have something. Uh, and before it's reached our teams uh, who will actually be developing this, we usually assess on it and trying to say that we need to rewrite this, right? But sometimes it doesn't work and we should uh, fix uh, what we have for now until we can sell our services as um, redesigning maybe UI polishing or some actual writing as you know uh, and sometimes they come to say that uh, we just want to improve our architecture we don't care about uh, some UI box we have a team who is fixing this slowly but uh, it's not the why we are hiring you you know uh, I will cover some Describe some examples uh, where customers can do the architecture a bit later and the modularization. Uh, of course, expensive features they requesting accessibility uh, support, localization, and uh, on last year the customer asked uh, we need the full support, everything you, you that required for accessibility. We want all for fixed price for half a year, or just implement everything. Uh, <clears throat> of course, performance issues, uh, it's also a big part, uh, for our work and the even, uh, recent pre-sale and the project that we are working right now, uh, customer also came with this request, uh, regarding, um, synchronization issues and, uh, related to the performance too. So... Of course, some issues with the keyboards, small screens, you, I believe, all aware of that. And of course, fixing crazy bugs that they have right now, and the current team cannot deal with them, and they came to us. So, uh, 
this usual thing that uh, we are sharing with our customers that uh, your applications are usually doing a lot of stuff when it launches and it hangs and uh, requesting a lot of things, uh, no caching. And the bad thing that we are also proposing, and I encourage all of you uh, to discuss it with your customers and uh, during the early phases, that sometimes and uh, just API designed uh, not for the mobile experience, then you should have quick uh, refreshes, cache data, uh, refresh only fetch recent updates like by timestamps or just updates from day before um, such kind of things so uh, we should encourage everybody to spend some time invest and invest this time to improve this API uh, not only UI and in your spinners you know that we are usually doing for many customers but it was missed in their original design, but anyway. Uh, data encryption, they also asking a lot uh, on the pre-sales regarding the stuff that they need to um, pass some checks, uh, stuff like that. Of course, we are doing this uh, analysis and giving the recommendation, like we, as you know, or if you don't know, uh, we have services for uh, sonar cube analysis and uh, check marks. So you can request it by and create the ticket, in the help desk that you need this for your project. And uh, we can do this analysis uh, for some customers. Um, and CI CD pipeline issues. Uh, not something new. Uh, for the deployment, uh, as you know, that sometimes, uh, I would say most of the time, uh, our customers and projects have multiple environments and that's that's right. And we will build them multiple times uh, to have some distributions for different environments uh, have separation. Uh, long build time uh, also, the problem and like i mentioned uh analysis tools and the uh, integration checks uh usually it's hard to sell or sell a unit test and uh, some automation tests uh on those phases usually when we face with the problems and we try to either write them by ourselves or kindly ask customer to pay a bit more for automation engineer uh, but uh, as a recommendation here, don't uh, don't afraid to ask. It's actually a good thing uh, that we are, we are selling additional services, but uh, also we are, have a good visibility demonstrating these um, issues or demonstrating that we um, fix the problem and uh, we can show reports before and after that. Uh, I'll show one example later. Uh, then uh, that's for integration of third party libraries. Um, I have one case study on uh, next slides and I will show when the problems we have with the integration of uh, third party frameworks. And uh, we want to distribute it as SDK. There are problems with linking of that. Uh, if you can face with that, uh, it's not so easy, uh, I'll say. And uh, so distributing the SDK, it's a separate separate thing. I'll cover it a bit. So today I want to briefly describe five uh, case study and describe what issues we have and what what we uh, on what we spend a lot of time. Uh, any questions at this point? Feel free. <clears throat> Chat application. Uh, this is a project uh, for healthcare domain. Uh, this was a chat application for doctors, and it was very important for them to receive uh, important requests and messages uh, on their duty, so usually at night. 
that something happened, they need to do something. Uh, originally, customer came to us and we had a team uh, that uh, working on some bug fixes, not related to any new functionality, anything. Uh, but one day the server fault uh, occurred and uh, they come to us, say something wrong with the applications, find the root cause. Uh, the problem is that the uh, application had some logs. Uh, they were um, stored only locally, so you cannot review them. So only for develop development purposes by develop developers. Um, in Splunk, logs from server, they can even... Um, it was hard to find any useful information. For example, requests coming from what platform? Is it iOS, is it Android, or desktop, or web? Uh, hard to find anything useful there. Uh, so, but they, by IP address at least, they can understand that, okay, this happens on some specific clinic. And uh, they know that uh, that clinic is using like multiple versions of the app, like uh, three different versions. So old, old release, a bit newer, and recent one. Uh, stuff like that. They supported uh, old operating systems too, like more, like more than three. I believe it was uh, four or five versions, uh, major ones. Uh, and uh, it's not a problem in general, but it just increased the testing because we couldn't find where, where the problem is. Uh, and some internals. So <clears throat> usually if you want to share uh, something between two platforms, what we are doing, writing the code in C++. But no, for this project, it was Python. Uh, historically, some customer teams wrote the core of the application on Python. Uh, it was for the first time I've seen such, such integration uh, because it's done via um, some libraries uh, for Objective-C uh, with Python. Uh, and uh, this is chat application. So all of the core logic, including server connection, all of the data storage, everything was in Python. And only UI uh, was uh, native ones. Uh, so they had all, all of the bridges for all, all data you need. So all messages, contacts, contact list, uh, everything. Uh, so you actually double the code. The second issue uh, that this application have, except that's unknown. Um, oh, just a second. The major issue, uh, they have undelivered messages. So you didn't receive a push notification uh, on your screen and uh, the batch that something happened in the application. So when you open it, so it fetches in your updates and you can see something. Uh, and uh, this problem was uh, like in a the backlog, they just, all, all everybody was aware of it. But then the second problem comes, the server, like I said, fault because uh, one of the platforms start bombing server with some requests. Uh, some because nobody know what the request. So maybe it's a getting contact list or sending the message. So it's, it's unknown. Uh, so uh, to find this problem, first of all, uh, we spend a lot of time debugging this Python with native code integration on both platforms. Uh, I focus it on iOS application uh, and uh, then we figure out a very strange thing that uh, original authors wrote this code uh, for Python uh, to support multi-threading, but at some point they just say, okay, we will not support this. Uh, let's be just single-threaded application. So all, all requests from your native code supposed to reach the Python core from usually main thread. So you can understand what performance you may have for this, right? But um, uh, it will 
it caused another problem i'll discuss a bit later but to find find the problem was um, undelivered messages it was a bit hard because uh, actually uh, as you know there is a silent push notification that actually making your application running doing some stuff in background and only after that they can decide whether they'll present you the message or not uh, on the screen um, so in such some cases it was either quickly presented and disappeared uh, so removed uh, or just application did nothing uh, we involved our automation team and uh, every night we run a lot of automation test to uh, test three use cases uh, when application is not running it's minimized or it's active but you're on some screen and stuff like that and uh, we reproduce the issue and sometimes it like happened uh, two times per 1000 then we can reproduce it uh, but couldn't find the issue at all i mean so complex logic uh, uh, but this bug we, we, we fixed at some point. Uh, then uh, what appears? So, <clears throat> uh, like I said, this, this application has very high memory usage, poor performance because of the single thread, uh, this overhead of, uh, uh, because we had a core Python team who was writing Python code, then it was built, integrated with native applications, web applications. So, uh, very hard uh, some limitations with um, region because it depends on the language you know you cannot pass the all objects you want and had some crazy box when when you fix one problem more problems appear on this project and you can see it just immediately you fix it open the screen you you push the build for qa and they will create 10 more uh, so and then after many, many days of the debugging uh, with the Python and uh, native code, we found the, the, the magic bug. Uh, here, I want to have a very small conversation with you if you can share uh, the craziest bug you've ever seen, and then I will describe what, what we have there. If somebody wants to share, feel free. Don't be shy. Anybody? Okay. Uh, I'll describe there. So, like I said, this uh, application has um, a single thread. And the problem is that when you, uh, from Objective C, you want to call the Python function. Uh, it's not synchronous, so you actually declare the callback, uh, passing the callback uh, to receive the result, and uh, your native code is waiting, uh, processing the callback and returns you. So you can imagine what happens if you do call call some function via this small proxy uh, in, from multiple threads. So you, uh, your current function declaring the callback, it's saved waiting until something persists and then another function also call on the stuff and declare their callback so magically when the first function completes it's called the callback but from second function and this application become calling random functions in your application so in the logs you see that you you didn't send any message you did not top uh, like on contact list or anything so it's producing some code and the, the bad thing is start calling the backend server functions like refresh and stuff like that so we suppose that that's called uh server fault because uh like millions of requests were coming from somewhere uh that was crazy uh then another application uh this is a sample of good ones uh, good processes um, and other things. So this product was um, it's a product company. They have five million active users on those dates. Uh, they had a lot of uh, regular UI changes, so impact is pretty big. 
because of the marketing events, uh, because of some holidays and stuff like that. Uh, for the mobile team, they didn't have QA at all. I mean, they they have QA in the company doing some things on the web, etc. But they are rarely testing QA, uh, mobile applications. It was a surprise for us, and we say, hey, we touched a lot of projects. Maybe it makes sense to have to pass some full testing. You know, uh, <clears throat> we we achieved this. They they did it. Uh, at some point, but uh, it's a good example how uh, how was, what was the quality of the product and the team and the processes. Um, the, we have auto tests and UI tests. Um, they did, it's not a full coverage, I would say, uh, but it tested the major functionality that you are usually spending time on. And, uh, and also they have testing sessions. So uh, every Tuesday, a release was every week. Uh, so every Tuesday or Thursday, we have test sessions internally with um, uh, like it's five developers, one engineer manager, and that's it. Uh, testing, seeing that, okay, everything works, we're ready to release. Uh, in addition to that, um, like twice per month or sometimes once per month, they have all hands meeting with all of those designers, product team, everybody, CEO, CTO, they're all together sitting and testing what they have right now and reviewing that. Uh, sharing thoughts, not blaming anybody, just making suggestions, uh, looking at some pixels not aligned and stuff like that. And just, okay, let's fix it next week. Uh, it was a great thing, uh, like I said, and uh, they they spent some time to even write open source library to share it with the people. And uh, <clears throat> during the code review, they had this uh, rule. I would say they review and say, "Hey, we have five lines of code. Can we make three? Why do we need five? And uh, they they used um, Snapkit and um, uh, for iOS, for example, uh, and they try to make the code smaller and smaller because you know you, you make can make it compact. Uh, uh, so it was reviewed all the time. Uh, it's a good thing. So the summary of this project and uh, like the constant pursuit of perfection it was very nice. So. From from the pixels on the screen, from the colors, uh, from color perfection, uh, and like I said, uh, on the API level, uh, they actually designed on the mobile first approach. So, as this application also run and uh, represent the fresh information, uh, they migrated to GraphQL endpoints, and for this information uh, fetched on the at the beginning, uh, they fetched. The, the real come on, uh, fetch the data they need uh, at this specific point for the specific user, um, and they constantly improving it. Uh, also, great communication in Slack, all of the integration in code, uh, like all of your CI CD stuff, some warnings, etc. So, was, everything was integrated. Uh, and great communication. Uh, we, we recorded all the time uh, short videos about uh, improvement made, so feature development, a UI, shared with everybody in Slack. Uh, you got a lot of likes, uh, some suggestions, so very nice communication. Uh, they even asked to locate our DevOps, who was mm, like uh, short. Uh, very great performance. Um, yeah, that's a good case. Another case regarding the performance. Uh, my experience was a remote desktop uh, that you uh, should uh, render on your device. Uh, usually Windows. Uh, piece by piece, you can see some small textures and fonts. Um, so it was done via OpenGL uh, for for all of the platforms. 
yeah, even on, on Mac also. Because uh, Corey Graphics just failed. So for, uh, just a second, yeah. Uh, so to draw the frame, we have like very short period of time. Uh, there are problems with multi-threading or if you were involved in some game development, you know that uh, eight cores doesn't solve the problem. Uh, so there are some limitations for textures and uh, some keyboard hacks that, that, that you should do because uh, by de by design, you know, keyboard is not present that there's no text field on the screen, right? So you need to do some hacks, move your text field outside of the screen so user doesn't see, but the keyboard appears, so things like that. Uh, hello, Swift UI, but you cannot do that. Uh, so then for profiling, uh, as this task requires a lot of uh, things doing at the same time, uh, uh, we actually need to decrease amount of for um, let's say instructions uh, being called. So spend some time on the disassembling the function by function because it's rendering a different primitives and uh, so you're looking on the, how many instructions of how many moves of jumps are doing. Uh, a process in that in, the, in that time. Uh, also reviewing cache uh in the instruments, uh, design code in that way that uh, you know it depends on the uh, implementation and the process you have. But uh, when you write if else clause, you know that sometimes you need to think wherever if will be called most of the time or else because it, it causes misprediction, right? Uh, so more advanced stuff. Uh, then also figure out that uh, some arithmetics we are doing uh, during this process, it's also slow. So we implemented this replacement for the left part uh, to the right right part. So uh, you might find it useful uh, when you compare, for example, this all of the variables, so better to do this arithmetics or white, uh, white and white of your image. It's also better to do like on the right side, comparing variables that they are equal. So uh, you can make a screenshot if you need this stuff on a low level. Then uh, something regarding the textures because of the power of two. Uh, so when you need some piece of information or a rectangle, um, and sometimes you cannot uh, fit it. Uh, so you're actually using a lot of um, textures just because uh, you know this problem, and uh, there are limited of them. So you you should cache them and reuse because it's expensive, um, and creating texture is expensive. So better to re reuse the old one. So implementing some caching mechanism and stuff like that. So spend a lot of time profiling this. It's very interesting thing, and you improve with something on 2%, you're jumping and happy. That's, and you can see the difference on the screen. Uh, so <clears throat> it's an example of the performance. Uh, another example uh, from another perspective. So this is a originally pre-sale MVP uh, and the first customers. Um, so the project started like uh, pre-sale was in the May, uh, something like that. We started discovering in July and they started implementation in August already. So it was hard and uh, interesting experience that um, just after five weeks of discovery, we just started immediately and uh, uh, started building MVP. Uh, we decided that we cannot afford two platforms in five months uh, from the development perspective so all of the management management scrum overhead and just code review and things like that and everybody agreed that okay let's let's do ios first uh then and then they realized that our their first customers uh, would be android ones uh but it's another story <laughs> uh then 
uh, yeah design was done by another company it was also causing the problem because uh, we implementing faster than they are drawing yeah uh, so it also showed our performance of the soft sort but at the same time we cannot deliver things so we actually delivered um uh, on sprints we're delivering screens in the black and white uh, without any ui ux and then on the next sprints we are redoing the uh, this uh in color i would say and uh, another thing that we are uh, proud of, all of the teams, that we are designing API on fly uh, pretty quickly and uh, by request. And so we're gathering uh, once per week um, across teams. So we have three teams for our side, Salesforce, API, and mobile team. And uh, vendor was uh, for UI only. Uh, and like I said, so at the bottom, you could see that uh, design team started one sprint ahead, delivered us uh, the UI, and next sprint, we are starting it. Uh, pretty tight schedule, uh, but we have detailed plans. I, I understand that you cannot see anything there, but just to show you that complexity of that and a lot of activities. Uh, and it was quickly development. Um, developed during the discovery and first sprints uh, to achieve this, all of that. Uh, another use case, bank application. Uh, here's interesting thing. Uh, <clears throat> this is example when customer came uh, came to us uh, asking that they 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 want them uh, model application or white labeling. Uh, then uh, so we we did the assessment. They, they already have this application; it's running. Uh, they have customers, uh, but they they want to deliver it to other regions and uh, maybe other other theming, other product name, etc. So, well, we did this uh, short discovery again regarding the white labeling. They asked for fixed price. Um, a lot of things, of course, included uh, modularization, code obfuscation, and uh, they have the Chinese team uh, as a, as a main development uh, team for two mobile applications, Android and iOS. Uh, so, what actions we uh, had to do? Uh, so, to work with the team. Um, the, communication expert were assigned to help us to communicate with them because the problem was that um, uh, they didn't work with a fixed price at all. I mean, they, they cannot work with the scope um, because it's a different, just different approaches used. Uh, they are not accustomed to that and it was hard to switch. So they recommend us to do some action. I have an additional slide regarding that. Uh, also, as a project that was uh, pretty hard uh, from the perspective that we have some legacy code, uh, we should rewrite something, reuse. Uh, it's basically for seniors and uh, with a very good experience. So we had to cut some people who are not able to uh, cover all of those things, uh, despite the fact that this was a fixed price and a hard time. Uh, you know, the project started um, in the February 2022, you know. Um, so the thing that we missed uh, at the first stage is that uh, we haven't documented every actions, uh, every agreements that we um, agreed on our calls. So uh, next month you come and the Chinese team can say, we don't remember this. No, no, nobody told us, you know. Uh, so it was some specifics. Um, and then uh, when we realized that uh, SoftServe cannot deliver this on time, we shared some work with the Chinese team. It was our mistake. Uh, let's say mistake. We didn't have any any other solution, but it was it had some problems at the end. 
um, because of the different processes, uh, like they break the build uh, for us uh, a lot of time and just, oh my God. Uh, then, notes from communication expert. You, you might visit uh, some meetings regarding this topic, um, our calls, but anyway, uh, there are specifics working with them uh, because um, uh, usually they come to the meetings when uh, there is a developer, his manager, a manager of his manager, and upper management. And uh, so usually it's a problem because uh, they cannot, um, you cannot blame a developer that they, that he he broke a bill, right? So you, you should use other words or don't mention this at all. Uh, because uh, his manager loses the face, manager of the manager loses the face, and for them it's 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 uh, uh, it's a catastrophe. So, uh, regarding team collaborations for one of the project, uh, we draw this uh, big diagram: who is blocked by because this is a fixed price. We don't have time uh, to wait for the next sprint, uh, so we gather it. Uh, multiple times per week, drawing this, helping our product manager to, to depict all of that information. So um, recommend to use this technique. Uh, some interesting facts also would be nice to hear your interesting facts from mobile development, but to we'll share just a couple uh, that I faced uh, in my experience and uh, I have this also this thing that to handle the iPad uh, on my table, and usually the cable was on the left side, uh, but on the QA table it was on the right side. And even if, if this is a landscape mode, uh, the bug was reproduced only when it was on the right side. But on my table it was usually left, and I couldn't believe that the, that the issue is reproduced. So I came to QA team and uh, say, "Okay, I got it." <laughs> So this is a different. Um, it was several years ago. I found face with it um, uh, after that, but just just to know uh, device type, of course, matters. So sometimes on the iPod, uh, I don't know why. Maybe the performance of some specifics uh, on iPod. It was uh, like issues were produced. Um, better than on iPhones, for example. Uh, for localization of surprises, I would say, uh, look at the application that has um, had um, seven languages, uh, like German, Chin two Chinese versions, Japanese, uh, French, I believe, or Portuguese. Uh, and uh, we thought that German will be like very big words not fitting on the screen, but surprisingly it was, it was Japanese uh, because of the application specifics. Uh, as you know, the Japanese language uh, doesn't have some words and they're using uh, sounds to, to pronounce this, especially for computing words. Um, they just don't have such thing like uh, remote desktop. They, they cannot uh, translate this. Uh, so yeah. Because of that, there are a lot of uh, letters on the screen, but the problem is that, you know, Japanese are written from top to bottom. And when you use the word wrapping, um, they, they so we translate it uh, with uh, some additional company, put it in the interface, given to the review, and they say, you know, uh, when you did this word wrap, and if, if we try to read it, uh, from the new line, you know, from from the top, uh, it sounds too very stupid. Because could could you fix it somehow? Because like you know, <laughs> but you cannot do it because it's, it's done for all languages. As you have this automatic wrapping, right? Stuff like that. And we agreed that okay, maybe for Japanese, let's do the uh, wrapping not uh, left aligned but uh, center aligned. So when this uh, phrase uh, was in the middle. Uh, even if they read it from top to bottom, it doesn't sound stupid. So in, in some windows, some views, it was just for Japanese, it was exclusion. Uh, it was interesting also experience. So uh, 
Yeah. Another case, uh, React and React Native. Uh, one of the customers uh, came to us and say, we have everything ready for React components. We have a storybook uh, already ready, implemented, uh, just reuse it. So we have everything. Uh, we haven't reviewed this on the pre-sale. Uh, and when the project starts, we just start and implement the UI and after two sprints, well, we realize that it doesn't work because uh, <clears throat> they should write it for React Native. It was also a surprise for them and uh, a surprise for their, their developers who know React Native, but for some reason, they just didn't realize that. So we kindly asked them to rebuild the servers and then have actually duplicate. So they need to fix it in two places. Uh, that such thing. So uh, some notes I want to share and uh, want you to share with your with your teams. Uh, so better to invite our at early stages to review such thing like uh, mobile first designs uh, and getting the performance uh, analytics and logs processed on the server because we cannot find issues uh, after that in the mobile apps. A review and crash reporting, because sometimes uh, a Firebase is configured, but uh, missing missing files, uh, you cannot find the root cause of the crashes. Uh, so we also usually recommend shifting some rollout dates uh, to not have um, iOS and Android apps released immediately on the same dates. Uh, because it's a big load for everybody uh, and uh, just have a shift like one of two weeks uh, on the processes. So for some project it works, for some of the projects no, they want everything at least one day. Uh, but just from experience, we recommend this shift. Uh, another topic uh, that we are auctioning actually discussing right now you know, separately is um, being ready to speak to customer about your uh, poss possible possible solutions to their problem that they are asking on the interview. So they are asking technical questions for the problem they are actually have on their project and they want to hear the response from the soft soft company and representatives that uh, everybody understand what's going on. Uh, on some level, of course, because you need to dive, review the code, etc. But anyway, they are asking that. So I had to, two times when uh, our colleague could not pause the interview for customer and uh, uh, they come to us to COE to just to pause the interview uh, because uh, we don't understand what the problem is, what kind of problem they want to fix. Uh, the, that they have such uh, hard interviews. So just be ready and spend this time, invest your time in this. Uh, so basically, that's the whole thing that I want to share. If somebody wants to share something interesting, it would be nice to hear. Yeah, we have a question, I guess, from Vitaly, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Johan. <clears throat> I have a few questions, actually. Uh, first one, it's more interesting about modularization in the last for your example, because this is white label. And for me, it's more interesting the way how you integrated this modularization. Why it's interesting? Because when we have white label, it means our project is to generate a lot of production targets. It's real, like in general, source the same, but different products. But when we work with SPM, uh, we create module, but at the end, we have to connect each this module separately to each target. Uh, did you have some another solution? How we connect these modules to different products? Um, yeah, I agree that, that that's the problem for, for that um, project we had that I described for bank application. Um, they uh, they use Cocoa pods, but the story is the same. Uh, if you build the product like an SDK mm -hmm. or li library, they want you reuse for your another target. 
um, all of the dependencies should match. And um, also we rely that um, it's a good that you can reuse some open source library, uh, but you need technically link it to your framework uh, to not have this dependency anymore. So mm -hmm. if you if you take a look on some uh, Firebase libraries or Zendesk SDK, it's one binary, everything is included. They, you don't have external dependencies. So the idea is general to get rid of all of that stuff because you, you cannot deal with it later. Uh, of course, you should write your things manually and uh, maybe using some hacks, uh, just put some source files in your project from external library, right? To link it together because mm -hmm. um, otherwise it doesn't work. So we had the troubles with the uh, recapture library uh you know this google ones and uh, firebase libraries uh it's not possible to link with them uh, via cocoa ports and uh, so you cannot for, for the target project uh you can't link it together so it's all the time complaints about missing symbols etc so we did some work but then we realized that for for, for users of your exe framework you need to provide a big list of libraries that they need to link with and mm -hmm. even say the exact versions. So in general, <clears throat> be ready to rebuild your library multiple times for a customer. Because... And, uh, across, across the teams, if it's one hour product and we are in the same company, uh, it's the same issue. Mm -hmm. uh, so recapture version is not updated uh, for ARM64 simulator. And you cannot build your application on some Macs, for example, or cannot run it. So it's it's a mess. Because I look at the solution. What if you use this tool like Twist, I think, or uh, Xcode mm. Jan for mm, what I can see? Like in last time, Xcode become worse and worse. And maybe it's better to switch responsibility of generate project to the this generation tools and Xcode used just for just editor and uh, debugger <laughs> like this. Uh, yeah, you know, some, thing, uh, some customers just want to see the picture that our yeah. project is modularized. Uh, I didn't describe this uh, pre-sale, but um, uh, we had a customer who came to us say, uh, our project is totally ready for white label and they have 21 library for mobile project and for those 21 library they have 21 github repo hosting this library and they have 21 people reviewing all of those uh libraries and responsible for that so they have everything set up if you draw this to your uh, CTO, or cto looks great uh, on the paper uh, but then you cannot build a new product. So we tried to build a new product for another region. And from those, from, from those 21, I have to use 17 to build a Hello World application. There's no UI, no. Like, mm -hmm. it, it didn't work. I mean, it just on the paper. So I would encourage in any case, if, if something specific required, uh, don't use um, some open source as a dependence and try to build it inside. Mm -hmm. It's on the way. Of course, it will it will not work for some, you know, Amazon SDK, Firebase, it, it's a problem. But okay. so for project generation, I, I got your point, but you know, think twice. <laughs> yeah, I understand. And I have another one question. On the start of your presentation, you mentioned about uh, accessibility, and you mentioned that architecture staff of SoftServe can provide some service of integrate accessibility in some previous product. My question is like, um, what exactly you can provide? Because integrate accessibility, just like a technology, it's not complicated, just string and incorrect properties, it's that. But more complicated to build correct way for the people with uh, possibility to see something, because all mm -hmm. these pop-ups, colors, uh, special uh, UI controls, in this way, 
it ha somebody has to sit and rethink how to represent this in another way, not not visually, how to deliver mm -hmm. this information. What exactly software can suggest? And did you have experience when you provide the service and after that company or this product has some like validation or certification state for say mm -hmm. yes it, it works exactly like work once uh, it's a good question uh, i can't answer it right now regarding the accessibility uh what we have right now in my experience i had this project but uh, uh, there were specific companies who are reviewing accessibility thing and they are providing the reports for that so mm -hmm. we uh, we have just all, all we need to uh, to integrate that and it was uh, tested by a separate i believe uh, they also involve uh, those people who actually have some uh, disabilities uh to to validate it more carefully so i don't know what right now do we have any partnership with somebody it's a good topic uh, okay let's, let's ask around uh, regarding the check marks uh, um I don't remember what the what they provide regarding the um, accessibility um, stuff that you have in code. So maybe they also have something regarding some missed thing. But you know the check marks the focus a bit different. Uh, if somebody remember regarding Sonar Cube, um, it was a while ago. I, I just don't remember. But in general, I I know that there are separate uh, companies who are doing the services. 